Hi, I'm Dr. Sridhar. Welcome to my channel and I hope you are uh, enjoying the MCQ series which I'm sharing recently. Uh, this uh, is intended to give you a short message through multiple choice questions and uh, if you have any suggestions for questions, please mention in the comments. I do request you to subscribe and share the videos as well uh, and like the video so it reaches more people. Uh, the question here, the following play a role in TTN pathogenesis. Uh, I would like you to arrange it in order of importance. So we have uh, four choices, vaginal squeeze effect during normal delivery, precipitate delivery, elective caesarean section and emergency caesarean section. Remember you need to put it in the order of importance which is more likely to cause TTN in this sequence. Again I will pause for a few seconds. So uh, the most important point to remember here is a pathogenesis of transient echipnea of newborn which is failure to switch of the sodium channels in the alveoli. So the in intrauterine uh, direction for the sodium channels is to pump the water inside the alveoli while when the labor process is started due to the effect of cortisol and other hormones the uh, sodium channel starts pumping in the reverse direction so water is removed from the alveoli. Uh, few hours before delivery depending on when the labor process has started. So essentially where the labor process has not set in or where the delivery is very rapid so there is inadequate time for this uh, reversal to happen. We have uh, fluid left in the alveoli and this leads to transient echipnea of newborn or wet lung. So if you look at these causes, elective caesarean section is a caesarean delivery where there is no onset of labor. Uh, there is no labor process and the baby comes out all of a sudden. This is the most likely to lead to transient echipnea of newborn. So this will be the first one. The second one would be precipitate delivery uh, or emergency cesarean section depending on uh, whether the labor process has started in either of them. So you could choose between either of these two and you won't be wrong. In emergency cesarean section, some of these cases are due to antepartum hemorrhage, for example, where the labor process hasn't started and there is actually bleeding. So these cases have a higher chance of uh, respiratory distress from TTN physiology. While if the mother has been in labor and it's obstructed labor or failure to progress, you don't have to face the TTN in these cases unless there is any other concerns. In precipitate delivery also, the labor process has started, but the delivery process is very rapid. So there is uh, the vaginal squeeze effect is limited and these babies have a higher chance. So uh, vaginal squeeze effect during normal delivery contributes to reduce the risk of TTN. So that will be the lowest uh, among the risk factors mentioned here. So it's not a risk factor, it's a positive factor which will reduce the risk of TTN. So to put it in sequence, we have elective cesarean section. Emergency cesarean section would come second if there was no labor process precipitate delivery and then the normal delivery with the vaginal squeeze. So I hope uh, this aspect is clear and as I mentioned, please do like and share. Thank you.